In the early 1980s, Sony and Philips came together to launch the CD player, giving consumers their first real opportunity to enjoy digital music from within their own home. These early CD players featured vertical mechanisms making prominent display of the fact that they were playing a small spinning disc. However, by the mid-1980s, these were superseded by the new draw loading mechanisms, hiding the disc away, out of sight, out of mind, and turning the CD player into merely a utility device. Bang & Olufsen were no exception. They launched a range of draw loading mechanisms. As the 1980s was drawing to a close and the 1990s was dawning, Bang & Olufsen were hard at work, working on their next all-in-one music system. This design was spearheaded by the legendary David Lewis and promised to be something special. From the earliest cardboard prototypes, it was clear that the CD was going to be centre of the system on full display. David Lewis cited the Open Sesame episode from the story Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves as the original inspiration for the Bio System 2500. The glass doors allowed access to the treasure inside. With all that said, I want to get my hands on one of these systems, and this is what I've picked up. It's a Bio System 2300, and if you're paying attention at home, you might notice that there's a slight difference in the name. Yes, it's not the 2500, as that one has the tape player, and this one does not have the tape player. And quite frankly, that's what I prefer, because I don't play tapes. Now, I've already made a full video of repairing this item. It had broken glass doors. Uh, the CD mechanism was stuffed and the display was a bit dull. So if you'd like to see that video, click on the link above or in the description below. But now, let's take a look around this amazing sound system. The entire frontal area of the BIOS system is covered in glass. And as you wave your hand across and say open sesame, the glass doors slide back. It's theatre if you want to load a CD as well, you click here. Put the disc in. It has a full complement of CD controls. Clicking step advances one track forward. You can also just go directly to that track. You can also randomize, you can repeat, you can use AB to play a certain section of a CD over and over again. And you can also name the CD and how you do that is you click go to, then it says naming, and then you use the step buttons to put the name of the CD in. And every time you put the CD in, it'll remember the name that you stored. It also has a fairly comprehensive and decent radio. I don't even have an aerial plugged in right now, and it's able to pick up most stations loud and clear. And also display the RDS information. Also sound adjustments so you can change the balance, the bass, the treble and put loudness mode on. Controls are kept to a minimum with power, FM, AM, antennas and left and right master link connectors and an auxiliary input. The BO Sound 2500 speakers were also designed to go with the system as you can see from their early design mock-up. And as you wave your hands across and the glass opens up, you can see that the gap between the speaker and the system is more than enough for the overhang of the glass. The angle of the speakers also matches the angle on the CD player. This back ledge of the CD player also perfectly aligns to this shelf of the speaker and they kept the angles up on the back as well. As mentioned before, this is Bang & Olufsen's first active speaker. That means that inside here is all the active circuitry required for powering the speaker. 
Connections are fairly straightforward, and there is an 8 pin DIN plug, which is the Bang Olufsen standard of the time. You just simply plug that in, and then you also have to plug this into the wall, as this is a powered speaker, but so that you only have to power one speaker from the mains, you can use this here, which will allow you to plug in the other speaker. It's just long enough to reach the other side. Removing the frets or the speaker covers reveals that there is a tweeter and a mid-range driver. Both speakers feature these rear-facing base ports. Speakers sound rich, clear and defined. While today we take for granted that small speakers can have nice punchy bass, back in the early 90s this certainly wasn't the case. So when Bang & Olufsen designed these, they really did pull off for Remarkable because there is decent bass coming from these speakers. No, it won't shatter the earth, but you do feel it, and for a system of this size, it's remarkable. Remarkable even today, given that this speaker design is over 30 years old. There's also decent mid-range and decent treble. It's very clear, it's very defined. Yes, you could overwhelm it if you put it up too loud, but you know, at normal listening volumes, it sounds fantastic. And to be fair, it also sounds very Bang & Olufsen. It sounds like a Bang & Olufsen product. In 1991, the Bio Centre 2500 was launched with a price of £1,250, or you could buy it with a Bio Lab 2500 speakers for £1,910. The 2300 was also launched, costing slightly less at £1,000. The speakers were sold separately, as the Bio Centres could be paired with any of the BO active loudspeakers. In 1991, they also launched the Master Panel AV9000 which looks identical but has less electronics as it worked only in tandem with the AV9000 control center. 1994 saw the 2500 and AV9000 replaced by the Overture. This featured a new linear CD mechanism. In 1995, Bang & Olufsen made 500 BO Center 2300 DABs for a test of DAB by Danish Radio. The 2300 DAB was modified with Motorola Power PC821 housed in a separate box, and was controlled by an Apple Newton notepad. In 1999, the 2300 was replaced by the Bio System 3000, and to match the updated styling, the Bio Lab 2500 speakers were given aluminium grills. Perhaps the biggest change to the lineup was with the launch of the Bio System 3200 in 2003. This featured a hard drive which could store CDs for later playback and cost £1,700. 2011 was to be the final year for the Bio System 3200. Over its 20 year run, there were various ways to mount or display these systems, from wall mounts to a range of stands. Some that could hold speakers, and you could also get it with CD storage. It also featured prominently in TV shows and movies. It was always in the back of shot in Monica's apartment and Friends, it was the CD player of choice for Surgeons and Nip Tuck, and in the latest James Bond movie, it features in the opening sequence. It was also in a movie called The Sum of All Fears, and in a Dutch series called Dirty Lines. With all that said, you might want to put one of these systems in your home, but with the oldest ones now over 30 years old, there are a few things that can go wrong with them, like I showed in my video. The, the doors can be finicky, the CD mechanisms can fail, the foam can rot on the speakers, and the belts can go weak in the mechanisms. You can take your chances on the used market, or you can go to a specialist like Sound Affair, where 2300s are available for about £500, and the 3200s are available for about £800. But 
they may not be within your area. Anyway, that's brought us on to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed watching this and you enjoyed the content. If you did, please leave a like, maybe tell me about your experiences down below. And if you want to see the next video, then subscribe and I'll see you all again soon. <laughs>